We've created four living, breathing Victorian worlds. Uh, it's their pee. And challenge six famous faces to survive 24 hours in each of them. Trapped in the past for four days with no 21st century luxuries. That's just wood. There is no escape, only hard work. This series takes us back to a time when three quarters of us lived hand to mouth. You're worrying about the fact that you won't get as much lunch as you would do otherwise. Uh, please don't say that, that's really rude. Working for exacting bosses. Ow! This is a family business and I own it. When it's muck, it's bra. Doing the jobs our ancestors were born to do. I'm searching through horse manure for dog muck. Gut wrenching work. <laughs> it just smells terrible. <laughs> and back breaking hours. They need to earn enough money for food. We only work when we get paid. And a roof over their heads. Up and teach, please. Living 24 hours in the past. <laughs> Who will finally conquer the 19th century and discover <laughs> their inner Victorian? You can't keep me here for Our time travellers have just been kicked out of their third workplace. Get out of my pottery! Now they have to find a way to survive their next and final 24 hours. In the potteries, former world champion hurdler Colin Jackson felt the injustice of the factory workers' lot. There is no wage. He promises the money. Presenter Makita Oliver and actress Zoe Lucker went round in circles. Impressionist Alistair McGowan was overwhelmed by the conditions of the Industrial Revolution. The brilliance of what they did. <laughs> but it wasn't just industry that was revolutionary. Former Tory MP Anne Widdicombe led a Labour movement. I don't mind a bit of political unrest. Wage agreed is wage pay. Backed up by actor Tiger Drew Honey. Why should I pay you if I have nothing to sell? That's not exactly what I asked you, is it? We only work when we get paid. Homeless and broke, at the bottom of the heap, there's only one place left to turn. The workhouse. This was the Victorian equivalent of today's benefit system, and a network of over 500 of them sprawled across the country. This is the Southwell Workhouse in Nottinghamshire. Opened in 1824, it's the best preserved in the country. And even today, the mere mention of the workhouse can send shivers down the spine. The hard labour is real, the punishments are real, the gruel is fresh. So, will any of our time travellers step into the clogs of Oliver Twist and have the nerve to ask for more? Welcome to your final 24 hours in the past. You have fallen as far as you can possibly fall in Victorian Britain. You are destitute, and in order to avoid starvation, you've asked to be admitted to the workhouse. You know the drill by now. I'm going to give you a diary. It is written by someone who has experienced the life that you're about to lead. Dip into it whenever you can. At this stage, I'd usually try and say, enjoy your time, but endure, I think, would be a better word. Yeah. And I will see you back in the 21st century <laughs> in just 24 hours' time. So you need to walk up through the gate, and the master and the matron will welcome you at the door. Goodbye. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, here we go, guys. Last one. Maybe they're really lovely. It's very difficult because it's such a beautiful building. <laughs> So this is where I would expect to come for like a spa weekend. I'm sure inside it uh, will be pretty awful. What are the other people going to be like? How desperate, how miserable will they be? Because you're in there with everyone. Well, I am apprehensive about this one. This is the one I think that's going to kind of make me feel disturbed. Waiting for them a Victorian expert, Ruth Goodman, the workhouse master, Bruce Owen, real-life foreman and factory boss, 
and the workhouse matron, Annette Hambidge, now retired from her hospital job. Oh my God, he looks mean. This is the only form of relief available for those who've fallen on hard times. It's also an institution that hopes to reform your moral character. Master, would you lead them in? Get through that door. Wait for me on the other side. Now! Yes, sir. With room for 158 paupers, this workhouse was funded by taxing local landowners. A slight sense of hope. Oh, this isn't too bad. And this room is really clean and God is good. That's some comfort. Order, cleanliness and discipline were the backbone of the workhouse. Anyone refusing to work shall for the first offence go without their next meal. For the second offence be reported that they may be punished. Bed by eight o'clock. Yeah, that's quite nice. That's all right. Yeah. That's early night. Men on that side, women on this side. You will only speak when you are spoken to. You will now be cleansed and clothed in workhouse uniforms. Men, you will follow me. You will follow me. Admission to the workhouse was a strict procedure, sterilising and stripping the new inmates of all personal belongings. There's just one bath. You decide who will use it first. Do you understand? Yes, miss. Yes. No, I don't think we, we do this, do we? I don't think I need to be... We, any of us need to be... Uh, no. No, we're not going in the water. Oh, my God, she's so horrible. It's so sort of animalistic to put a bath in the middle of the room where, where you're completely vulnerable, how degrading to be stared at. Who's going first, then? No, yeah, I want to feel warm. like warm water. <laughs> it is warm. I felt that for days. <laughs> it is really warm. Oh, really? Yeah. Guys, look. Oh, no. Hold on. It's a razor. Cut through the razor. I'm going to wash my face for the first time in days. Ah. Oh. People as they were brought in were stripped from their families. Men and women were separated and children from their parents. This is an account from one of their diaries. The very vastness of it chilled us. Everybody we saw and spoke to looked metallic, as if worked from within by a hidden machinery. Start work. The sound of keys and locks and bars and doors banging froze the blood within us. Having shunned the bathtub, the women addressing before Matron returns. Okay. This is so itchy. Yeah. The women's uniform was typically made of a coarse fabric called grogham and stiffened with gum to make it hard wearing. I feel very itchy and uncomfortable, and you can feel that you're wearing someone else's clothes. It's all tied in at the wrong places and big in the wrong places. And You've all washed? Yes, miss. Turn around, woman. Not even damp. The rest of you come here. Hands. Hands. It's not good enough. Now, wash properly. Would you do it in order? Well, oh, I say, age? folks, actually, it's rather nice. Well, I thought I might stick my feet in, actually. Sure. OK, um... Oh, this is bliss. Oh, that's lovely. I don't think I'll come out of here. I don't want to go in that water. It's disgusting. They haven't washed for four days. Selfie. Selfie. <laughs> the final act of surrender is to hand over their soft shoes for rock-hard clogs. Well, I'll this move, right? Heel, do the left one. Come back. Heel, heel. Silence! This is not a house of fun. This is a house of industry. Men, follow me. 
If you bring your attitudes from the 21st century, you're in big trouble, I think. You've got to literally disengage your brain from being in the 21st century. That water is still not dirty enough. You were given clean water. I assure you that we've all been What? There. You do not answer me back. Which parts of your body did you wash, then? All over. All over. And you? All over. What have you got in there? Just some bread and cheese, matron. All belongings in the corner. Christ never took from the poor, matron. Having worked and worked, I'm 67 years old. And now you talk to me as if I'm some sort of scrounger. What do you we think? We have wasted enough time I'm to take you to your workplace. Now, you two women, I would distance yourself from the likes of this woman. You will follow me. Old woman, you wait here. They're about making us suffer. They're about beating down our spirits until we've just got nothing left. Well, I have never once felt powerless. So the clue is in the title, it's a workhouse. And before our inmates can get any food or rest, there are jobs to be completed. Some of those jobs are going to be about the upkeep of the workhouse and some of them will be about making a few pennies for it. But make no mistake, for our six time travelers, there will be no profit. They are here for bed and board. Stand on the line. So you're going to need to make the mattresses that you sleep on. The mattresses get in a real state. They get urine soaked, people are sick, people have diarrhea. So they have to, at periods, to be replaced. And hopefully within the next hour and a half, you should have something finished. We've got an hour and a half, guys. Yeah, it's not long, is it? Not long at all. I can't see a thing there. With no electric light, working after dark means making do with candlelight. All I can remember is how to do a blanket stitch. So a blanket stitch may be what's needed here. Feels like doing the London Marathon, seeing the fabric st ah, stretching out ahead of you. Certainly the pace is picking up, but we know time is of the essence, and the world record is under no threat whatsoever here. While Anne is waiting in the wash house, Zoe and Makita are being put to work in the oakum picking room. There is a length of rope for each of you in that bucket. And I require that to be picked down to the individual fibres, as you see these women are doing. Oakum picking was a form of recycling. The fibres from old hemp ropes were unpicked so they could be sold for mat making or mixed with tar to seal the lining of ships. You have to be really careful, because this is really sharp. And I've just poked myself under the nail a couple of times. And it was... Zoe and Makita have an hour and a half to fill a bucket between them. This is my idea of hell. I feel like dark things happened here to poor, poor kids that worked here, and it just makes me feel really, really sad. I'm really freaked out that I have to be this close to it, because I, I just, I can't, I do, can't handle things like this. The matron completely, 100% terrifies me. She literally looks you in the eye, you catch her eye, and it, you, your soul goes cold, yeah. your bones shake. They've got to discourage people from coming here. Cost oh. money here. Yeah. So if they made it too comfortable, they'd have too many people, wouldn't they? Right, okay. okay. Have you had much trouble with this woman? I have. She has broken the rules three times, Master. She's not washed. She has not dressed properly. She has refused to hand over belongings. Christ never took from the poor, madam. I think you so. Sir. You tried to take my You clothes. have been quiet! We are not addressing you. Oh my god. Blimey. No, but you should address your creator, madam. I you can't you. speak unless you're spoken to. Follow me. Disobedience, obscenities, drunkenness, violence, all could lead to one place. In here. Here you'll stay in solitary confinement until I say. And Christ will judge you, sir. Oh, well. 
So this is what they did to people. People who dared to stand up to them. I feel like I'm brushing out a really bad wig. Yes, we look so dry on. Imagine, I wear it to supper. <laughs> Sushi? Yeah. No, like no. Beyonce. Oh, can you give Beyonce a break, please? <laughs> the old woman that you came in with has been sent to the solitary confinement next to the dead room until she will conform with our rules of this house. Now, back to work. Thank you, Miss. Solitary confinement, that's hideous. She's just like, if, in a room with no windows, no food, Come nothing. on. That's... But they put and an they, old woman in Yeah, there? they would, and they'd leave her there until she... And she'd go mad. Jesus. She does not know when to shut up, does she? <laughs> I don't in the least regret my decision. I'm very cold, uh, but I'm glad I took the stand I took. And if this is what it takes, well, this is what it takes. It's not comfortable at all. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. After all that. I think I could have a good night's sleep on here. Colin and Tiger have finished their mattresses. Five more minutes, Ben. But Alistair isn't even on the home straight. Yeah. All right, well, look, why don't I stuff it and then cut the end off? And then I've just got to... I'll have a short mattress, but at least I'll have a mattress. Thank you. Okay. You got a needle ready for me, Lee? No, I'm sorry, this has to be done. Thank you very much. Well, I got a mattress here, but it's just not quite big enough for my long frame. <gasps> I tried to cut a corner, never cut a corner, because I could do with that corner to sleep on. Maybe that's a bit shorter than me. <laughs> you can ask Anne to swap. That may be the right size for Anne. That's a good idea. It's just bigger than my pillow were over. <laughs> it's like a futon, it's an odd shape. I know that, CJ. <laughs> it's a cat bed, really, isn't it, I've made? You have made a cat bed. I'm Bless you. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be odd. We're sleeping in the fetal position. You two come with me. If they don't measure up, they won't eat tonight. Well, a rather difficult start to your time in the workhouse. It is to be hoped, however, that since the bad apple has been removed from amongst you, you would redeem yourselves. You men, have you all finished your mattresses? Yes, Master. Yes, Master. Then you will have something to sleep on tonight. So, Matron, how much did they do of the oakum picking? They picked their full quota. They picked it cleanly. And I was very pleased with their work. Thank you, Matron. Unfortunately, the women lied about washing. The rules are written up on the walls and they are followed to the letter. Some of you will receive a full ration and some of you will receive a docked ration. There are no rewards within a workhouse. There are only punishments. Our time travellers have only had a bit of bread and cheese all day. No potatoes, bread only. No potatoes, bread only. You may eat. Can eat that? <laughs> what happened with that? She spoke really disrespectfully to the um, matron. And they said what? Put me in solitary confinement. But she just backtracked the whole time. Is she not like being told what to do? Clearly not. Come on. She stands up for herself and stuff. But she's to, it's to everybody else's detriment, always. She never completes the tasks. We always have to suffer because she insists on voicing her opinion.
Anne has received no rations in solitary. Her only distraction is her diary about men on the brink of starvation. I was employed in the workhouse at bone breaking, the best part of my time. We looked out for the fresh bones. Some were not so particular about the bones being fresh as others. They eat it from old bones, meaning those in a state of decomposition. And some had been in heaps two or three months. They eat it from these as well as from the fresh ones. Nobody could read that and believe that it was happening in England even in 1840. It is unimaginable. I mean, some of the descriptions there of the shifts that men went to just to get food uh, would remind one of the concentration camps. It means that we have never been so hungry. So we're just a bit worried about how we're going to sleep, starving in, I think, quite a haunted building. <laughs> Bow your heads. We will return thanks. Almighty God, we thank you for the food that has fed our bodies. And we thank you for the industry which has cleansed our souls. And we will always remember those in the world who are less fortunate than us. Amen. Amen. This table first. Inmates could sleep 20 to a room, sometimes two to a bed. You will have the beds with the night shirts. Thank you, Miss. Settle down, get into bed, and I will lock you in in half an hour. I don't want to be here. It's really, really, really horrible here. Every night's been really difficult, um, for obvious reasons, but, um, but this is just a nude level. This isn't about endurance, this is about torture. This is like, what am I doing in this uh, building? Anne's been in there now for about three and a half hours, and if she doesn't change the way she's behaving and show some respect, things could get really quite serious. The matron could alert the local magistrate and have her arrested. It would be quite a thing, wouldn't it, if a former minister for prisons ended up in the slammer? I have one more task. Please don't me, please don't me. You, woman, come here. Come on, for sake. The old woman is still in the punishment cell. And she needs water. Show you the way. Why oh, she's done. Oh my God, are you serious? You're not standing here. Anymore. My only real worry is running off in the night because it's a stone floor, and I could actually do myself an injury. But apart from that, I'm not worried at all. If this is the price of telling those two bullies what I think of them, so be it. No. Yes. No. Right. Well, I'm going to stay with you. I'm not. I'm not. You're not staying down here on your own. No, I'm not I'm doing it. I can, my love, I can, really, honestly. You are not staying in here on your own, Anne. Well, it's very kind of you, but you might find you've defied their rules if you stay. And Makita's probably up there now, terrified. Oh, God, she is as well. Yeah, so your greater duty is to Makita, it's not to me, because I'm not remotely terrified. <sighs> it's okay, I'm fine. God. <laughs> it's okay, Zoe, honestly. <laughs> I can't believe they, they will let you stay here. They can't. They can. They come, they will. It's quite thrilling to think that we've made our own mattresses. Because um, we just don't do things with our hands anymore. We just don't have skills. I'm pretty happy with mine so far. I think it's quite comfy, I have to say. Yeah, Much yeah. better than the other ones we've been Oh, having. yeah. The straw is really good. Really good. I'm glad you've got some high quality straw then, gentlemen, for your mattresses. As you can see, I'm perched on mine. I don't I don't move. <laughs> but hey ho. We'll be all right. I'll beat my way through it. <laughs> it's nearly midnight. I'm here to take you to the dormitory. Leave the lanterns here. Collect your things. 
I hope you've had time to reflect. Much this way. That is your bed at the end there. Thank you, madam. And I shall leave you to your prayers. Thank you. It's okay, I'm fine. <laughs> it, it is like something out of a horror movie, that the whole institutionalised kind of sterile feel, and then the fact that our friend, again, is in solitary confinement, lying on a rag and bone car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Apart from man, of course, he thinks it's hysterical. <laughs> See, we would have missed this. This is what we missed, this is what we needed. Hysterical laughter. Oh. Oh. Imagine if that carries on all night. At first light, the inmates must prepare their dormitories for inspection in 30 minutes. Empty your chamber pots into one. Get yourselves washed. Get things tidied up. Now! How did you sleep on your own bed that you made? Good. Yeah. You're right? Yeah. Wait, it's awful. What you should have done is made it a bit wider and shorter. <laughs> you are up there's water you to wash and I will be back in half an hour to make sure that everything is clean and tidy do it the clock is now ticking till matron returns I didn't realize that a um, mattress made of straw would be so uncomfortable it was actually like Chinese torture it was like I would say the most unpleasant sleep of my life it was freezing I didn't go to the privy. I had to hold it in all night. It was absolutely disgusting. And they faced the dreaded wash bowl again. Oh, look, swallow a bit of soap around in the water. Yeah. I've just right. spilt a bit of wee on my hands. If it was just my wee, wouldn't be as much of an issue, but the fact is, like, three men's wee is fairly disgusting, actually. One privy could be shared by as many as 40 people. I feel sick and hungry. I'm actually over food. I'm just over it. I'd much rather be warm. It's not very nice being talked down to by the master of the time. So it would be a really hard life to get on with, just like one step up from prison, basically. Um, so I think you'd really have to pull together if you wanted to get through it. I just cannot wait to finish this day. Oh, yes. Stand by your beds. Stand back. If they fail the inspection, the inmates won't get a hot meal to start the day. That's better. Time for breakfast. Have you washed? Yes, ma'am. After yesterday, you obviously have a problem with keeping clean. No, they have not. Now. Because of your behaviour, we'll just have bread, all of you, for breakfast. I will make a change. You come down for breakfast and prayers. I feel like she's going to do this really hard, <laughs> really quickly to me any second. She's going to fit. This totally sucks. The worst thing about it, really, is you, you just feel so subservient and so bereft of joy. It's a really dark, grim place. You're seeing people every second of your life in extremis, and you're an extremist too, and that's going to have a big effect on your soul. These women are docked. Do you think so? She said those women are docked. They're just giving them bread. 
In terms of our treatment, this is the the lowest that I felt because it's just like you feel like you're totally controlled. I don't see why, you know, if you knew people in this situation, people that are already suffered and were vulnerable, why you just have to be extra mean to them. Oh, we missed you. Absolute silence. You may eat. Why are we just got bad? Because the matron's a, a vicious, vile piece of work. She's very spiteful, this, uh, this ghastly old harridan. Workhouse bread was often bulked out with chalk to economise. The men have a pint and a half of gruel, a thin liquid of water and oatmeal. Mm. Sorry, I'm done. Yeah, you're done. I was trying to literally shove as much energy as I could in, but that is just you make yourself revolting. Sick. I'm not even hungry anymore. So none of them could stomach it, far less find the stomach to ask for more, but they're going to need all the fuel they can get. Breakfast is over. And jobs for the boys are the toughest in the workhouse, reserved for the undeserving poor, because fit and healthy men are regarded as sponges on a God-fearing society. And as for the women, well, if they finally want a full meal, they're going to have to prove to the matron that they can bow down to her authority. Good morning. We're ready to begin the first day of full work within the workhouse. You men, follow me. You two women will follow me to the laundry. You wait here for the cook. They'll work for three hours until dinner time. Follow me. Here are your instructions. I want ten puddings ready for me to cook for lunch. Raw beef free from bone, beef suet, which is what? I've never made suet pudding. Oh, my God, OK. I think that's suet, that white stuff. Suet is indeed oh animal fat. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Why is this so upsetting? No, we can't deal with that bit. <laughs> Shred the suet. Stone breakers, you'll break the large rocks with a large sledgehammer and you'll make all the 170 pounds of stones fit through this grill. Is that understood? Yes, sir. Bone crusher, that is 18 pounds of bone. They need crushing in here. Using this. And it will fit through the mesh into the basket. Start work. The eyes really suffered on this job, apparently. A lot of people went blind. So excuse me for being a little bit precious. And wearing these two tea strainers on my eye. Just, just, let's just look at this. That has to go through that. Look at it, it moves around. There is absolutely no technique. Not I hope. <laughs> These jobs brought a little money into the workhouse. The crushed bone was sold as fertilizer. The smashed rock as hardcore for roads. And that's the biggest. I can't break these rocks down to that size. Absolutely nuts. Well, how does that work, then? Before washing machines, there was only one way to get linen clean. Zoe and Anne have to wash, scrub and dry their entire dormitory sheets. You will beat them for 15 minutes. Turn them regularly. Make sure the dirt is coming out of them. Harder. She's horrible. I imagine that this horrible bundle of clothes is Matron. Matron! Matron! 
Anne's rebellion is about to rebound on Zoe. Take the sheets off these beds. Take them down to the laundry. They now have to wash the men's sheets too. Five ounces of raw beef from the bone. That is... I guess they just don't put much meat, much beef in. So what have I got to make? Ten, all right. Is this right? It just looks so small. That's right. It's a very, very small pound weight pudding, isn't it? Like a teeny, weedy little dumpling. It's supposed to be one pound weight pudding per person. How would you feel if you were given one that big? You're way below half. You have one more hour. The pressure of it is going right through that joint. So I just don't know if I can do this because I don't want to lose my tennis playing, piano playing, snooker playing movement for the sake of this. There were all kinds of people in the workhouse. There were desk clerks and potters, labourers and actors like Alistair. For those men who came in skilled with a trade, this sort of work could destroy the tools of the trade, their hands, leaving them trapped, unable to go back to their skilled jobs, even if there was work out there. I just have put a bit of rag over it. And a bit of string, a little bow. I'm over this job now, I really am over this job. Oh. Ow! It's quite dangerous as well. It'll stop it bending back on itself anyway, which is what's causing the problem in that joint. Exactly. Ten suet pudding, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. All right, let's put them there. Can you show me the puddings, please? Um, yeah, they're over there. Big. They're far too small. I thought they would maybe rise or get bigger in the oven. No, they need to be around about that size. You're going to have to redo them, and they need to be drier. You've put too much water in with it. OK. Makita has used the ingredients for one pudding to make ten. Oh, this is so upsetting. With just 30 minutes till dinner, Zoe and Anne still have a mountain of sheets to wash. In the smaller tub. Well, she said not, actually, madam. Uh, Zoe said... That... I am matron of this workhouse, and you will put doing? them in the small tub. Anne? What are you doing, darling? They've got to go in here. I'm sorry, Zoe. And the others from the larger tub. Doesn't matter if we wreck the system. You will not answer back. Time is running out till their work is judged. Remember what we did in the dust yard? What? Put a couple of larger bowls in. Put Wait the finer what? ones on top. We can always blame somebody else. If it wasn't on our watch, go for it. You've changed. <laughs> it's like these kind of sizes, would you? You don't have to be massive in there. Pieces like this. Yeah, that size in there at the bottom and then put the proper ones at the top. Chuck a couple of those in now. All right. I might just skip a few of the processes and hope you just don't do it. I'm just going to wring it out. Yeah, I can measure out a pound of beef. Yeah, I've realised I'm such a quitter. <laughs> Because if I had any chance to quit when she said your puddings are they're not right, I'll just go, no, I'm fine, bye, I'm out of it. Keep going. Just keep going. Anything in life, just keep going. Well, we need for four bags. 
In total? Two, three. Three like that. But that's, on, that's only one quote, so you remember that, yeah? Oh, my goodness, mate. You've got both 270. Yes. You're joking. Is it both? Yes, it's both people it doing It is both people. Not one person. <laughs> But then there's no chance. And also, the sacks have got holes in it, so half of our hard work falls out the bottom. I don't know what to do anymore. I just can't do this anymore. It's ridiculous. Have you been beating these sheets for 15 minutes? Yes. Each? Uh, yes, I'm just doing that. I don't think so. That is dirty. So is this. I want them all taken down and doing again. How many have we got left? Oh, uh, we've got to take them all down and start again. What? She says, because they're disgusting. They're about making us suffer. Look what oh, happened to me, this. my dear. You know what they can I do. I know, but that's, but that's because you back-chatted. Yeah, At I'm least going to back-chat again yeah. as well, so you stay well, no, clear. Well, no, don't. No, oh, don't, I will. because we'll both, we'll both be in, the, in, in trouble if you do no, that. No, you won't be in any again. trouble. No, Will, because we You won't going... be in any yeah, trouble. We did yesterday. We're all starving right now. My only concern is that if she speaks out a matron so horrible, which she is a really awful, awful woman, She's then going to throw back in such confinement, and then if that keeps happening and keeps happening and keeps happening, at some point she's going to starve, and that's what I worry about. Don't worry about me, Zoe. I will okay. always worry about you, Anne. Well, you shouldn't. You shouldn't. I just don't. I would do. You're worrying you to... about yourself. You're worrying about the fact that you won't get as much lunch as you would do uh, otherwise. Please don't say that. That's really rude. You did say all of us will be punished. You said that, so yeah, you I are did. worrying about that. I did, right? because I'm worried about everybody. But you sometimes have to think maybe about other people apart from just yourself. Now, I have to think about what is right. And what is right in this situation? And what is right in this situation is to stand up against a pair of bullies. As I've just... Uh, okay. as, as I would argue. So long as it's only one person taking a stand, yeah, you're right. I probably will suffer for it. But if you say you're worried about me, I worry about you. You're joining them. There is no way we can win this. I just physically don't think, even with cheating, we can actually do the workload. You three, come with me. Within about four seconds, I thought, this is really, really an awful thing to have to do. Just to be there looking at those bones, looking at those rocks, thumping it. Phew. I was asking somebody about mental illness and depression and whether that was an issue. And, you know, I always try and see a way out, but boy, phew, that would have really. I think a lot of you have struggled physically with the work set today. I think you three in particular seem to have found it very physical, is that right? Yeah, I've got a headache from the continued pounding. It was just physically impossible. And we all think it was a, a challenge beyond us, beyond us for sure. All of those tasks were taken directly from the workhouse rules. And not only would you have had to fulfil that quota in your two hours, but you've got to scale it up through the rest of the day. I mean, I find this a very strange thing to say. I'm speaking to a top-class athlete, and I'm telling you, you're not physically fit enough. I would agree. A lot of Victorian manual workers were enormously strong <laughs> because they did this sort of thing day in, day out. How close did they get to the fulfilling their quotas? They didn't even get halfway. It's honestly the, the hardest task I could ever imagine, and I, 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 don't, I don't honestly see how it's possible. Exactly, and, and, and that was quite deliberate. They didn't want you here. What they wanted you to learn from this is, I will work my way out. I will do anything to avoid being here. Matron. Well, the puddings were made too small to begin with, so it had to be redone. Yeah. You worked so hard, but unfortunately, the person who was meant to be helping you hindered you at every step. For the work that you did, you will receive your full portion at dinner time. You. you did not fulfill your quota. Anne. Yes. <clears throat> Why don't you just give up? There is no room within a workhouse for an individual. 
I know. So what do they do? Somebody with, with like you, who is rebelling against everything, would eventually be thrown out of the workhouse, which means you will starve. A 67-year-old woman on the streets. Yeah. People really did starve to death in ditches. You will now go to dinner. After dinner, there will be more work. I failed, and I think I'm having bread for lunch <laughs> again. But I did learn the importance of just picking yourself up and just not getting in a mood and not getting sulky and feeling sorry for yourself. Just stand up and keep at whatever it is you're doing because I can do a lot more than I think when I just change my mindset. So, yes, the, the matron thinks I lost, but in my head, I won. <laughs> Doc. Thank you. Full. Zoe is the only one receiving her full Stop. ration. She has suet pudding. The others are getting one boiled onion each. Doc. If you can imagine living in a place where everyone's going to be in a whole onion for lunch, can you imagine the smell? Mm. I'm exhausted. I haven't been this tired. Ever? So what are we going to do this afternoon, do you think? I would hope they give us a group job. Fruit picking? Fruit picking in the afternoon all together. How great would that be? Mm. Yeah, we've got no chance of that. Horticulture is a nice thought. But one route out of the workhouse was a job in manual labour or in service. If you could impress the master and matron. It is now their duty to prove they have what it takes to claw their way out of poverty. This is your last task in the 19th century. And it is an opportunity to escape the workhouse. This afternoon, we will be cleaning and maintaining the workhouse. Men, follow me. Women. People were free to leave the workhouse at any time, but without a job, they could find themselves with no place to sleep and nothing to eat. Our inmates are being tested on their standards of cleanliness and stamina. I need this floor finished, that floor swept and scrubbed, that floor and the stairs swept. You will whitewash this room above the line. It was believed that whitewash prevented disease. It's all in the preparation, boys. Take it right in. Get your dust sheets down, we've done that. And do you want to use that brush there, then? Sorry, why are you trying to move me to another brush? All right, darling, do whatever you want, then. I've been on the other brush all afternoon. I'd this okay, one was no better. Problem. No problem. So what of all of us, which one of you think is more suited to this century? I think Zoe is quite well suited to it, but she doesn't like it. Oh, flipping heck. And how about Makita? I think she'd survive in this era. Possibly quite good as well. I just went back on my nail and my finger. Mind you, Anne, in her personality, is quite sort of Victorian, but then... Yeah. But then, in that, but then that just doesn't work in Victorian times, does it? No. I'll do what I've got to do, but with suitable breaks uh, and at a suitable pace. I think the bottom line is none of us six would be any good <laughs> in the Victorian era. That's the truth. Pick up your whitewash, your brushes, and follow me. You will now whitewash this privy inside and out. I can't believe the enthusiasm of my colleagues to do exactly everything that Patron says and get it done to a high standard. Harry anybody who's not actually, you know, speeding things along. Can I just dry him while you're talking, Anne, if you just don't mind? Do you mind not harrying me? Bring your buckets and your brushes and follow me. Now, paint this again. I will be back shortly. There's ten minutes till the end of their final task. 
getting tired, but I know that if I stop, I'm just going to feel like I need to go to sleep. There's no leisure time. How am I supposed to get up there? A final inspection will decide if they've proved their worth as Victorian workers. Well, it hasn't dripped all over the base. Not too much of us. They've done pretty much what they were asked. A lot of it hasn't felt difficult to me until today, and that was really about the fact that the jobs here have no point. I got really annoyed about it, and if I was in this place ever had been, I would have gone crazy. So, their stay in the 19th century is almost over. It's time for a last wash and a brush-up, if the women can finally bear to touch the soap. It's warm, I tell you. Over four days and 96 hours, they have survived the filth of the dust yard, the servitude of the coaching inn, the social revolution of the potteries, and here, the soul-destroying grind of the workhouse. But which of our six time travellers would have survived or even flourished in the age in which modern Britain was born? I knew it would be hard. Yeah. yeah. But <laughs> not this tough. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. Every morning you wake up, and you're cold, and then you've got to go and do this incredibly laborious day. We have this expression in the 21st century, marginalised, you know, those on the margins of society, social exclusion. In Victorian times, a whole class was marginalised, and my view is that the, one of the tasks I felt I had this week was to say no, no, no. There's something quite liberating about not relying on technology, not relying on hair, makeup, yeah. our clothes, all that sort of stuff. Like, I'm actually a bit fearful of going back to the normal world because I'm not sure. We've been institutionalised. I'm not sure where I sit in it anymore. Absolutely, but the beauty is, and we're so lucky because we can go home. Yes. And I think that that is something that we'll take with us as well. You look back on it and you go, this is what they had to go through. And look, various different people paved the way so that we could have the life that we have. Yeah. This is not just 24 hours in the past. You are at the end of 96 hours in the past. It's maddening. <laughs> And you're still standing. Really? <laughs> As someone who has herself spent quite a bit of time immersed in the Victorian world, I can honestly say I am deeply impressed with every one of you. Thank you. <laughs> well done. Well done, everyone. Thank you. Nikita cannot fault your work ethic. You could get a job as a maid of world work whenever you wanted one. Thank you. <laughs> Hot fire coming through. Uh, it's their pee. From their night we. I'd almost say the same for you, Tiger, but you wouldn't want to be a maid of all work. Mm. I think you are somebody that anyone would see the potential in. You are a worker. Tiger! Yes. <laughs> Hedge! I've been robbed! Zoe, it has become clear that no matter what Victorian life threw at you, you would find a way through. I might do it with my hands. This is giving me the fear. Alistair, what were you telling us you were no good with your hands? There you were in the potteries. And balance, those wear boards. We're coming through. That is a thing of beauty. And Colin, any dust yard would be proud <laughs> to have you. <laughs> it's not a pleasant smell. And you might not have survived <laughs> very long in Victorian Britain, but I think your moment of glory was founding a labour movement. <laughs> <laughs> wage of greed is wage pay. We won't work. We only work when we get paid. If I had to pick one person who was most in touch with their inner Victorian, it would be. Zoe. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know what to say. <laughs> My mother will be proud. That's great. Thank you. Would you like to lead your fellow time travellers back to the 21st yes, century? Please, Let's go, Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll definitely miss how kind of 
basic everything is. I know that I feel that, that there's, there's lots of things about me that I probably not necessarily recognised. I've, I've done things here that I never thought I, I, I would do. This experience would last and stay with me for, forever. It will have a permanent effect on me. I feel so lucky that I've been one of the only humans on the planet, really, that's actually been able to experience something as real as this. And the feelings that you feel, the emotions that I've been feeling, you think, wow, this is actually how people must have felt. And how did they do it? But they had no choice. Their family and friends are waiting. <laughs> Enormous congratulations for all that you've done during all of your 24 hours in the past. And I'd say fly like doves, but to be honest, you look like grimy pigeons. Yeah, Go! Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm gonna get home, might get a nice takeaway order in, lie on my big comfy double bed and watch some 21st century TV. Here you did a strike? Oh yes, I, I caused a strike. I, in fact, I caused a near riot. And they locked us out. They had to shut the gates of the potteries because I was rioting. <laughs> Mummy, you okay? This is why this experience has been so good. I got over myself. <laughs> Did you get over yourself? Yes, it turns out that I'm, I don't follow things through. When I have to, I get really good outcome. The first day was awful. The last day was bad. The two in the middle, I could live again and again and again. And there's so many things from the past that are just so valuable that we've lost. You know. Yeah. <laughs>